Welcome back. As promised, we're going to talk about three don'ts, three things that we should stop doing if we're serious about getting closer to being the church of Scripture, the church that God describes in His Holy Word. Let me, let me start our first don't by asking a question. What would you do if you were in some body of water, uh, a pond, a lake, the, the sea, a large body of water, and you were attached to something that was pulling you down, that was dragging you under. What would you do in that situation? I don't think the answer is too difficult to figure out. You would do whatever it took to get away from whatever you were attached to. If it was something clipped on, you would unclip it, unbuckle it. You would tear it off if you had to. You would do what it took to get away from that thing that was dragging you down. What if there's something that is dragging the church down, that's pulling down on the church? And if so, shouldn't we try to detach ourselves from that thing? It may sound odd, but I think there is something that is dragging us down and we should detach ourselves from it and as odd as it will sound to you, I believe that is our church building. The, the, the buildings that are the center of, of so much of our church activity, I believe they're dragging us down. And if that's so, shouldn't we detach ourselves from it if it's pulling the church under? Your reaction to this may be that, that this is just nonsensical. There's just no point in what I'm saying. That Because you can't have a church without a church building. That just... That doesn't make sense. We'll get to that point in a minute. But before that, I want to I want to start by suggesting that our church buildings are dragging us down and just give you a few examples on why I believe that's the case. We've talked about in previous videos, hopefully you've seen those, about just how much of our money, our contribution that we spend on paying for and maintaining and taking care of our buildings. It's a huge portion, a third, a half, and sometimes much more than that, just to take care of our buildings. Is that really, is that really being the good steward of what God has blessed us with? Is that how he wants us to spend our money? I, I, I don't think so. There are so many other things that what God has blessed us with, the money that we have, that we could do so much more than maintain a building. You know, some of the most volatile church disagreements that I have ever seen or been a part of had to do with the church building. The audio-visual equipment isn't what we need. The decorations just aren't inviting. The paint color just clashes and it's it's, it's not comforting. You know, which teacher gets that big new classroom or this classroom closest to the auditorium? I can't tell you the number of times I've seen teachers fuss about who gets what classroom. You know, the pews just aren't very comfortable. I, you know, they may look good, but they're not very comfortable. Or they're comfortable, but they don't look good. And on and on and on it goes. Is this, really, is this really the unity and love that, that Jesus prayed for in, in the book of John, that the church would be united and that the world would see us through our love and unity for one another? Not even close. Those kind of behaviors and actions and attitudes are not even close to what Jesus prayed for. We should be embarrassed by some of those discussions that so frequently happen in our churches. And we've talked about our church leaders end up spending a tremendous portion of their time focused on the building, taking care of the parking lot and the roof and the heating bill and the lights and the on and on and on. They become business administrators instead of pastors and shepherds and mentors and counselors for people. Is that what we want our leaders focused on? Physical things like buildings? No, not at all. Not even close. And perhaps worst of all, Jesus said to take the word into the world. 
take it into the world. And what are we doing? We're sitting in our buildings. We put a sign out and we wait for the people to come to us. That's not what Jesus said. He said, take it to them. The downsides of some of these unintended consequences, the, the list could be much longer. I'll, I'll stop with what I've shared. But I could go on and on about all these unintended negative consequences that come out of nothing other than worrying and fussing and focusing on a building. So with that, let's get back to the question maybe that you had. Well, what, what, Larry, why are you talking about not having a building? That's nonsense. It's just silliness. You have to have a church building if you're going to have a church. That's not true. That's not true. It wasn't true in the first century, and it's not true today. Historical and biblical experts Scholars readily recognized that the early church largely met in their homes. They didn't have a bunch of church buildings, and if they had wanted them, they typically didn't have the money to build them. So they met in their homes. They met there. They prayed together. They studied together. They had meals together. They built true relationships with one another very different from the high how you doing relationships that so many of us have with one another when we come to the building for an hour or two each week. They were with each other, sharing their homes and their food together in a real relationship. Now let's talk about today. Well, that was fine for them, but Larry, we, we can have church buildings today. We need church buildings. This is not true. The church in America, with all its buildings, all its different sizes and shapes and variations, the church in America, with all those church buildings, is in decline and has been in decline, as we've said several times now, for six straight decades, and the pace of decline is picking up. If church buildings are so essential, why is the church in America in decline? It ought to be booming with all the church buildings we have on every other corner. You don't have to have a church building to have the church. And if they're so essential, then why is the church in places like China and South America where they either aren't allowed by their government to have a church building or they can't afford a church building, why is the church booming and expanding and growing in those places? Let's just be honest with ourselves. You do not have to have a church building to have a growing, thriving church. So let's not lie to ourselves and say that we have to have church buildings. That's not true. And maybe, maybe just the opposite is true. Maybe our buildings have become an anchor. Maybe they've become so much of our focus that we've lost sight on what the church really should be doing. Maybe our church has, is a part of why we've turned the church into this American business enterprise. And, and that approach isn't working. We've talked about that. You know, God has blessed this country with tremendous wealth. The vast majority of us own homes. Why aren't we using that blessing for the purpose of church? Why aren't we taking church into the neighborhoods instead of expecting the neighborhoods to come to our building. When we could be having churches through all so many neighborhoods, we're missing this huge opportunity. Quite candidly, I will tell you, we're being selfish. We're more focused on our convenience and our comforts than taking the light of the gospel into our neighborhoods. We'd rather meet where it's comfortable and just hope that they show up. I encourage you to do something to break the cycle. Stop letting our church buildings be an anchor that is dragging the church down. Please don't dismiss this thought. Think about it. Pray about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you 
about it. I believe it is a serious issue. And when we look around and consider other parts of the world and what's happening with the church, and we, we look in God's Word about the New Testament, the early church, and what they had, maybe we've let ourselves go to a place where we're being anchored down instead of growing. Please think about it and pray about it. I thank you for listening to this. I, I appreciate you being willing to, to at least hear the thought. In the next video, we'll take up our second of our three don'ts to bring the, close, the church closer to the church as described in Scripture. I hope you'll join us for that next video.